determined to do this to open it up and straighten it. These little cones that you have in your, in each one of these desks, cones. So I'm gonna demonstrate this. We're gonna go with the tables that have it first and then we'll go around. So you can come up close for this one. Pay attention to what I'm doing. Everything with our way of learning is that we show you first, you pay attention, and then you're supposed to replicate it. So right now it's just like brushing bushy hair. <laughs> this is the trick that a lot of people don't do. Because you need to comb both sides. And it should be easy. If it's too hard to pull, then you're putting too much pressure. It'll just be the same as brushing your hair. And then take it off. Start a new one. You're gonna take it from this corner, spin a little. You're purposely tangling up the yarn and then you're pulling it straight and twisting it so it traps into a thicker yarn like this. This yarn with this method makes it really lofty. There's a lot of trapped air in there, which means this one is gonna have, if you put all your yarn together, it's got some bounce to it, lots of air. It's gonna make a very warm weaving. And with our tradition, if you don't want thick yarn, you go back, you untwist and stretch out more. Give it a little bit more twist. And then you're gonna do the same thing six times. Some grandmas would spin this six times. And then finally, it will get yarn like that. So it really, spinning is the beginning of weaving. I know a lot of people teach weaving first and then they have no idea how to spin. There's so many things that you need to do. <clears throat> so that's how you work with cards like that. But I go a step further. I've got actual wool combs. These were developed by the Vikings just right at the start of the Iron Age to work with the sheep that they bred, that they use to weave their sails with. A lightweight, waterproof, mildew resistant fabric, perfect to put on little Viking ships to get them from Scandinavia to the French and English coast. And that's the tradition of Navajo weaving it seems to be related to that whole process that they developed. It creates weavings like that. So you see like, I'm just combing and stuff that's too oily, dirty or too short, doesn't pull through. So I don't use it. And then I pull it out and everything is perfectly parallel and straight. So you remember when I was spinning and I was spinning really short and twisting? I'm doing the same thing here, but in one step. So now, instead of having to spin three times, I can do All in one. Oh, wow. 
And this is this is on the thick end of Viking <laughs> yarn. But it's called true worsted. All it means is that all the hairs are parallel. And most early Navajo weavings, the yarn was processed in a way that it made this. So thinner weaving or thinner yarn means thinner weavings, lighter weavings that are both flexible. You can wear it. You can take a, a wool that's kind of a little chizzy <laughs> and make it tolerable, <laughs> which is, most people would say it's too itchy to wear, but you know, considering other options back when they were wearing that, that was an improvement. Can you get? <laughs> the ancestors can what? Couldn't whine about it. <laughs> you didn't have anything better, so there was nothing to compare it to. So the weavings came out like this. And you can pass my shirt over on this side. Is that what Tishi wears? It's called um, it's called a head of How many know what that means? The blue shirt. I'm gonna borrow it. <laughs> I've gone through 15 to 5 degree weather with just two blankets and a shirt like this with um, wrap leggings. It works. <laughs> it's actually warmer than having a coat because when it's that cold and you're covered with a blanket, your arms and your body are close together and it keeps your hands warm. So as long as you didn't have to use your hands, you didn't need gloves. So I'll pass the, the weaving around. So those that have these can take some wool off their, their tables, take a little bit like this, and you're just gonna put some like that and just gently start. I have to warn you, new carters are always sharp because they don't um, tumble the ends like they used to in the old days. So it's like that. And you're gonna, you've got this way, flip this one, that way, flip it back, continue. And until you learn how to pick it, you can pull it off by the long tails like this. Flip it right there. Start brushing it again. So if you want to put the hairs on this one back on this one, flip, brush off, flip back, continue the fold. And if you want to lead an edge out, you just pull it off. So if you get something like this, then give the carding paddles to someone someone else. So I've gotten this one. Let me see. 